has been an unprecedented year for me. This is the year I started doing this YouTube thing seriously, and it's exceeded my wildest expectations. I never imagined that in just one year, I would reach 2,000 subscribers and become a YouTube partner. And to cap off this year of surprises, I think it's appropriate for me to make a video about another surprise that came to me this year. My first ever Kamen Rider Deluxe Henshin Belt, the desire driver from Kamen Rider Geats. For the uninitiated, here's a quick primer. Kamen Rider, or Masked Rider, is a Japanese superhero show made using the tokusatsu style, meaning it's done in live action, but with heavy use of practical effects to create the hero and monster characters. If you've ever seen a Godzilla movie, or an episode of Power Rangers, it's the same style of filmmaking. Anyways, every season of Kamen Rider basically functions as a self-contained series in its own right, with each year bringing a new cast of heroes and villains, and a new assortment of roleplay toys to accompany them, courtesy of Bandai. And the flagship toy in each assortment is the Deluxe Henshin Belt, representing the device used by that year's rider to transform, or in weeb speak, Henshin, into their super-powered Kamen Rider form. Before we begin, I should note that some assembly is required when taking the belt out of the box. The two belt strap pieces and the belt clasp are packed separately from the driver itself. It all goes together simply enough, though. The left and right sides of both the driver and the strap are clearly marked, complete with a this way up arrow. To attach them, simply squeeze the clear plastic tabs on the strap connector to attract the locking pins, slide them into place, and release the tabs. To remove the strap, just press the buttons again, and they'll slide back out. Quick heads up though, not all deluxe henshin belts work this way. Prior to 2010, it was common for at least one of the belt strap connectors to lack the release tabs, making the strap connection somewhat permanent. The clasp, meanwhile, simply slides on over one of the straps. There's no up or down to worry about here, the piece is symmetrical. Looking at the belt itself, it seems pretty plain. Basically just a black brick with a clear disc in the middle, bisected by a diagonal strip of more black. But if you look at it more closely, you can see a lot of molded in detail. All across the front of the belt, you can see what looks vaguely like circuitry sculpted in. There's even a different texture to the inlays with this sort of grainy roughness compared to the smooth outer surfaces. Also, this close up, you can actually see a bit of metallic flake in the black plastic. It's a subtle effect, but it gives the belt a very futuristic and slightly mystical appearance. And of course, you can see some arrow-shaped details around the rails on either side. We'll see what those are for later. Even the back side of the driver is well detailed. The different texturing is gone, but you can see more of the faux circuitry detail wrapping around to the back. You can also see what looks more like panel lining and even some fake screws molded in. Kind of funny, really, considering that this side has a lot of exposed assembly screws. Of course, the copyright stamp kind of breaks the illusion, but this is still an impressive level of detail. The belt strap is admittedly somewhat plain. The only detail you get on the straps themselves is some segment lines. This isn't a huge deal, but it's actually somewhat lacking compared to other henshin belts. The double driver had wiring detail across its belt strap, the deno belt had straps that looked like train tracks, even the kabuto sector segmented its straps in a way resembling an insect carapace. Generic belts like this aren't exactly unheard of, in fact, these straps seem damn near identical to the straps on the O's driver, but it is a little disappointing to see. At least there's some nice mesh detail on the belt clasp. Oh, and just so you know, the strap will only fit up to a 69cm waist, or 27 inches. This is made for children, after all. But there are options for expanding it to fit an adult waist. Bandai makes extenders that can get you an extra 20cm, or 8 inches. But if you don't feel like buying one of those, or if you're a plus-sized individual like myself and don't feel like daisy-chaining, a good length of string should get the job done, though it is more of a hassle. Of course, that's just the belt on its own, without any accessories. So let's take a look at what else you get in the box. This being a modern Kamen Rider series means you get extra trinkets to use with your belt. In this case, we actually have two different types of accessory. First up is the Rider Core ID. Only one is included, and of course, it's the one for Geats, the main rider of the series. This is a pretty basic one, just a hollow cylinder of translucent white plastic with a picture of Geats Kitsune mask printed on the front in red. There is some extra molded detail here, including some fins to align with the core of the belt, but the colors kind of wash most of it out. 
and it doesn't really do much on its own, so let's just set it aside for later. The second type of accessory you get is the raise buckle, of which you get three. The first of these is the hammer raise buckle. This is a weapon buckle, which makes it smaller and rather generic in design. It's got an interesting shape to it, but not a whole lot of detail outside the hammer itself. And it's a nice looking hammer. I especially like how they integrated the arrow shapes into it to tell you which direction to push to activate. It's kind of funny, between the spring action of pushing the hammer down and the ridges around the hammer head, it almost feels like one of those novelty squeaky hammers. And the bright magenta collar doesn't really help. For a more unique raise buckle, you're going to need one of the form buckles, like Magnum. This is Geats' main form buckle, and you'll notice this one is a lot bulkier and has a very different shape. In addition to more of the sparkly black, this buckle uses the same white and red color scheme as the core ID, showing that these are a matched set. It also has a much more elaborate design, like a revolver squashed flat. The pistol grip is quite small in my hand, but you can pull the trigger or spin the chamber, so you get quite a lot more moving parts. Also included in this set is the boost buckle. While this one is shaped similarly to the magnum buckle, you'll notice the design is very different. This one is based on a motorcycle, with the chromed out engine detail on the front, and a throttle handle rather than a pistol grip. Turning the throttle activates a spring-loaded mechanism that opens up the chrome pieces to reveal a similar gold ring to the magnum buckle. In the show, this would summon the boost striker, Geats' motorcycle, but here, it's just a neat little effect. But on their own, these things don't really do much. Where the magic really happens is when you use them with the belt itself. The belt takes three AAA batteries, which are not included, and go in through a panel on the back. You're going to need a long, thin tool to remove the battery panel, since it uses a spring-loaded pin to hold it in place. Once the batteries are installed, you can turn it on using the power switch on the bottom of the driver. Very nice voice, and very good English, too. Remember, this is a Japanese toy. English is very common on other rider belts. With the belt powered on, we can insert the Rider Core ID to activate Entry Form. Different voice this time, but another good one. Entry Form is the base form for all riders in Kamen Rider Geats, so there really isn't a whole lot going on. As far as the belt itself goes, all we've done is add the Geats symbol to the center. Also worth noting that the belt can't tell which core ID has been inserted, it just plays the same transformation sound for every single one. Of course, because it's a white LED, different colored core IDs will change the color of the light, so you get a bit of flair there at least. Now let's just go through and see what each raise buckle does on its own. Starting with hammer. Just line up the arrows on the buckle and the belt, and slide it in. That'll activate the standby sequence, then you push down on the hammer to activate the henshin. Pretty basic techno sound effects, but it is a pretty basic buckle. Of course, the clear ring lights up magenta on the one side, even flashing in time with the sound effects. Again, a pretty neat effect. From here, pushing down on the hammer again will activate an attack. Again, some fairly basic noises, but I like the rainbow effect on the lights. To remove the buckle, push the gray panel on the side to unlock the rails, and slide it back out. It plays that same sound effect every time you remove a buckle, no matter which one. Next up, Magnum. There's no arrow on the buckle this time, but it slides in the same way. It's just relying on the shape of the buckle to orient itself this time. To activate the henshin on this one, you want to turn the cylinder one chamber, then pull the trigger. mix 
of the synth and the horns this henshin sound has. Feels like I have an orchestra behind me as I transform. I also like the lighting effect here. Instead of just flashing a theme color, we get a green light shining through a window on the buckle itself, creating the image of a muzzle flash. I should probably clarify that there's only one button being pushed during these henshins. So you could just spin the drum two chambers, pull the trigger twice, or do them in reverse order and still get the same sounds. In fact, just one push of the button will also trigger the henshin. But the way the sounds are sequenced, this is clearly how they want you to do it. Once again, doing the same thing activates an attack. A new sound effect this time, but we still get the rainbow lighting effect. I like how it sounds like a bunch of gunshots immediately followed by a bunch of explosions, especially with how the synth almost sounds like cartoony laser blasts. And you may have noticed something weird happening as the lights shifted. We'll get to that, don't worry. Next up, let's try the boost buckle. To activate the henshin on this one, we rev the throttle twice. More synth horn mixing, but with the spring action you get a much more dynamic transformation effect. And once again, we get a green light showing off some shadow pictures, this time forming the image of a speedometer. The attacks on this one work a little differently. To get the boost strike, you want to rev the throttle once. the motorcycle noises mix with the music, really drives home the theme. Revving the throttle twice, meanwhile, activates boost time. Rev it a third time to get the boost grand strike. which is the exact same as the boost strike. Kind of weird, I would have at least expected some bigger explosions at the end. And that's what each buckle does on its own. But I only used one side of the belt. The real fun begins when you start to mix and match. Let's start with Magnum and Hammer. Either buckle will activate the henshin this time, or you can use both if you want. As you can tell, it basically just plays the two henshin sounds in sequence, with both lights flashing at the same time. One thing to note is that the belt can't tell which buckle is on which side, so even if I put hammer on the right, it would still play magnum first. Now for our attack. Rather generic sound this time. Just a rising digital tone followed by some explosions with a slow rainbow light cycle. Now let's try combining boost and hammer.
thing as before, but with the boost henshin instead of magnum. Once again, boost gets priority regardless of which side you use. Boost's unique attack system carries over here. Rev the throttle once, or press the hammer, to get the boost hammer victory. Yeah, that's the same sound as the Magnum Hammer victory. Kinda sucks, but what can you do? It's not like they were going to make up unique sounds for every buckle combination. We can also rev twice to activate Boost Time, followed by the Grand Victory. But enough beating around the bush. Let's get down to the main event, Boost and Magnum together. That was epic. First of all, that animation effect in the middle is brilliant. The way the pattern changes as it goes from red to green and how the lights chase each other around the ring is nothing short of magical. It's all based on colored inks, of course, but that doesn't make it less cool to witness. And that triumphant fanfare really makes this transformation feel special. Now for the victory. The same sound again? Come on, let's try the grand victory. You went to all the trouble to program in a special combined henshin sound, but couldn't be bothered to change the attack sounds? That's kind of a rip. Well, at least there's one more thing we can do, the revolve on. Pressing the button on top unlocks the front of the belt, allowing it to spin 180 degrees. Cool little horn jingle there, and it's a clever bit of design to make that happen. But that's really all there is to it, toy-wise. The Revolve On sound is the same no matter what buckles are installed, and like I said, the belt can't tell its left from its right, so this doesn't change anything about its function. Of course, in the show, there's a really cool transformation sequence associated with this, so this is one of those times where you just need a bit of imagination. It is a roleplay toy, after all. Oh, and in case anyone was curious, doing the revolve on without any buckles does this. And removing the core ID makes the same sound as removing a raise buckle. And if you try to transform without a core ID, this happens. buckle, but you won't be able to activate the henshin until you insert the core ID, which you can actually do without removing the buckle, provided that there aren't any collision issues. It'll even make the ring light up when you put it in.
And for the last of these little tidbits, turning the driver on with a core ID already inserted basically puts the belt straight into entry form. There's no sound effect, but as long as the core ID button is pressed, you can use a buckle. So that's everything you get out of the basic Desire Driver package. I know I've been giving it a hard time for the generic attack sound, but it's honestly a really nice piece of kit. Bear in mind, this is only the starter pack, and as far as starter packs go, this is actually way more complete than most deluxe henshin belts. Right out of the box, you have enough raise buckles for six unique henshins. That makes this the first main rider belt since 2015's Ghost Driver to have more than one henshin out of the box. And remember, every raise buckle can be paired with every other raise buckle, so at least in theory, every additional raise buckle you buy pretty much doubles the playability of the buckles you already have. So not only do you get more bang for your buck right away, but the package's value increases with every new add-on you buy. If you're in the market for something like this, I would say this is well worth the $70 MSRP. And with that, the year comes to an end. Thanks so much to all of you for supporting my content and helping me achieve one of my deepest desires. I can't wait to see what 2024 will bring.